Asian men are lovely. Oh my god. It is a hot, sticky midsummer day in late January here at down in the swamp. In the uh not so sunny sunshine state uh, today on Thursday, January 25th, 2024, but it is nice and sticky, but we have the air conditioner fixed in Doomsday Trailer. We have air conditioning and heat here in the trailer, so uh, we're doing our part to... Uh, keep global industrial civilization alive and kicking for another day but the little dog and I we need to uh, get down to the dock for my sundown margarita then we're off to a picking party to play acoustic music hopefully in the full moonlight with our friends if the uh, rain doesn't move in but uh, before I go I just, uh, I, I don't know, I guess I should have called my buddy Elliot Jacobson before I ran with this to see uh, whether I should be indignant here. Yahoo News, uh, a viral climate chart, hmm, a viral climate chart that alarmed experts seven months ago has been updated and the results are just as bad so uh i guess yahoo this is straight out of yahoo news and uh they 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 do mention elliot's name uh in, in this article but they're giving all of this credit on, uh, to some guy uh, named Thomas Smith, a professor of environmental geography at the London School of Economics, is, is getting all of this credit for this viral chart showing just one of the uh, many reasons uh, why we're so fucked. Uh, for many people, 2023 confirmed by NASA as the hottest on record was marked by extreme weather, sweltering heat waves here in January, and wildfires. It also saw climate scientists alarmed by a viral chart on social media showing just how far the North Atlantic sea surface temperature was deviating from the historic average. Okay, so they have a link to the viral chart. And who gets... Look at this! Here it is! So they link it to the viral chart. And here's Professor Elliot Jacobson. There you go. Uh... I did not know, Elliot, that you were, that you had a book of poetry. Anyway, we got to have to get Elliot to read some poetry. So they, so they mention right here, you know, fuck Yahoo News, fuck them. You know, right here, they, they link you to Elliot's viral chart. Okay? And then, and then they run off and, and give all of this credit uh, to this dude, Dr. Thomas Smith, uh, who obviously uh, was caught with his damn pants down. Uh, you know, having poet Elliot Jacobson pointing out how fucked we are. And, and, and now this dude, Thomas Smith, uh, is getting all the attention. Anyway, see, the chart, you, you know, that was created by Elliot Jacobson was initially shared by Dr. Thomas Smith. There you go. So, instead of interviewing Elliot, they interview the guy who initially shared 
Elliott's viral chart on social media. Yes. Anyway, uh, so I, I almost feel like not reading the rest of this story, but basically, uh, the gist of it, I'm sure Elliot's already, if you go over to Climate Casino, I'm sure Elliot's already talking about this, uh, but, but just take a, a wild guess. So, uh, since they're going to give all the credit to Dr. Thomas Smith, what is his update? Quote, seven months have passed since then, and the North Atlantic has now spent 321 consecutive days breaking daily sea surface temperature records. This year, you know, 2024, has shown no signs in improvement, with new data for 2024 showing a persistent pattern of record-breaking temperatures. Yep, 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 yep. And then they get off into this whole, uh, this whole story about global dimming. I, I, I'm not going to get into that right now. Uh, so this Thomas Smith guy is, is one of these global dimming, dimming adherents claiming uh, that, that you know when they cleaned up the, the shipping pollution to get some of the particulates out, what they did was they basically took out the chemtrails uh, from the ships and now ever since they, the, you, you know, they took the uh, aerosol pollutants out of the air to save few people from dying one way, uh, that global sea surface temperature started rising right about the same time. Uh, okay. From Yahoo News over to the Washington Post, and again, I, I could get in a whole rant about this, how, mil how meat and milk companies are racing to ease your climate guilt. And so what this is uh, talking about is this, you know, this over-the-top, uh, unadulterated horseshit, uh, bright green, uh, green washing lie that uh, the beef and dairy industry, particularly the beef industry, uh, a lot more than the dairy industry, is coming up with these, with just these bold-faced lies uh, about how uh, the beef industry, uh, and we're talking the hamburger industry, you're going to be seeing all of this unadulterated horseshit, you know, from McDonald's and Burger King and all the rest of them uh, talking about how uh, beef doesn't destroy the planet so you can eat all the hamburgers you want. I'm just going to uh, cut to the chase here. Uh, okay. Uh, this is a fellow named Scott Faber who heads government affairs at the Environmental Working Group which tracks the climate impact of food production this is really the only takeaway from this story that you need to hear. Quote, Eating a hamburger is always the worst choice for the climate. Full stop. What is shocking is that regulators are just standing by while companies are making these misleading claims. There is no such Thing as a climate-friendly 
hamburger. No such thing. Does not exist. All, all of this bullshit uh, about your fucking grass-fed beef and, 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 and all of this uh, crap, it's unadulterated horse shit. Okay. Uh... This is the reason why, why, you know, the way that I virtue signal is I don't eat hamburgers. I don't eat beef. I don't eat hamburgers, but I do uh, drink a shitload of milk and eat a lot of cheese and ice cream. Uh, I fully understand that, that some doomer uh, not eating hamburgers it isn't going to do a goddamn thing on a planet of 8 billion people. Uh, it is my way of virtue signaling. Uh, is all it is, nothing more. And the bottom line, it shouldn't, the sentence, there is no such thing as a climate friendly hamburger. There is no such thing as a climate friendly hamburger eater. If you eat hamburgers, uh, just one more way uh, you're, you're destroying the planet. Uh, so uh, cut that virtue signaling horse shit that you're eating your fucking organic grass-fed beef. Uh, take this Alan Savory dude Guy's full of shit. So sick of hearing about this Alan Savory saving the fucking planet with his goddamn uh, bright green lion sacks of shit. Anyway, but uh do need to give some credit to where credit is due because this is really uh, the only thing you need to say about eating hamburgers. This is from goodoldmedium.com from Crystal Rivers, which is not a town in Florida. Crystal Rivers, why no one should have children. I honestly don't know if Crystal is a breeder or not. I don't think she is. She never mentions in this article whether or not she is a breeder. Uh, Crystal is asking the question, until we fix the mess we've made, do we have any right to create more suffering in the world? Yes. My thinking is evolving with new and negative updated evidence. I have always, always, always championed choice, meaning it's up to you whether you have kids. Still do. But now that we're seeing the world go to hell in a brand basket of consumption, I truly begin to question whether people should be allowed to make more people. Hell is no place for children. It's not easy on the rest of creation either. I think we should have choice, fat chance, to every extent possible, yet it becomes harder and harder to justify allowing people to create others to live in hellscapes of loss and grief even the World Economic Forum, capitalist not without controversy at Davos, point out extreme danger signs. Do you think so? But it's not just the heating, which is somewhat adaptable, but the geopolitical wars and resource shortages that should also concern potential parents. There, so smoke them if you got them. There will be a lot more smoke from fires, from emissions, from militarism, from protests in our near future, even now in places 
we should be mindful that at present millions of kids die each year just from respiratory illness alone, but smoke is just one hazard. For now, people who can afford kids have them. They may not be thinking to project a decade or more toward more coming shortages, disasters, wars, and epidemics. A big blinding glare in the West is that people who can afford children don't usually think twice. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll uh, you, you know, don't, don't, just don't get me going. But I do, uh, we finally have some, uh, some, uh, intelligent commentary in, uh, in medium.com, <coughs> uh, which is getting harder to find intelligent com commentary on, uh, corona panic. Most in epidemiologists think that corona panic will look like a nose tickle in comparison to the coming plagues ahead. Parasites, mosquitoes, rats and other invasive species, and habitat loss promise some very bad bugs in our future. Our optimism bias assumes that our child will escape the odds. Odd. Yes. Uh, anyway, then, uh, of, of, of course, this whole hilarious meme, uh, people on there actually uh, m making, uh, apparently with no trace of irony, that maybe my kid, maybe my kid will grow up to figure out how to save the planet. No, uh, as George Carlin uh, was telling you clueless fucking morons, actually saying this with a straight face. I can't play that Carlin uh, shtick without getting a copyright violation. He goes, no, uh, your fucking little brat is going to grow up to be one more planet-eating, little consumer maggot uh, eating and destroying this planet. Your little planet-nibbling bundle of joy ain't gonna do shit to save this planet, you clueless fucking moron. That's paraphrasing uh, George Carlin and Crystal Rivers, but uh, anyway, uh, my dog is is having a heat stroke in January. We need to head to the dock for our icy margarita while we still can, and then we're off to a picking party to play acoustic music with our lovable, clueless friends while we still can. Bye, guys.